Delicious pastries and baked treats are displayed in glass cabinets, enticing customers to order and indulge. A variety of chocolate bars in colourful, well-designed packaging line the shelves, classy and stylish. The unique aroma of chocolate permeates the air. At first glance, one might mistake it for a luxury cafe somewhere in Europe. Looking out of the window, though, the iconic fleet of motorbikes and a distant po shop indicate that this is Ho Chi Minh, the largest city in southern Vietnam, where coffee is the number one agricultural export. So, here we are, in a chocolate shop, about to meet the owner of a chocolate brand renowned for its Vietnamese origins from seed to finished product. Sam Maruta worked at one of France's premier banks. Being sent to various countries was a routine part of his job. Being sent to Vietnam, however, completely changed his life. My last assignment as a banker was in Vietnam. And at the end of my contract with the bank, I was supposed to go back to France and I thought Vietnam was too much fun and I'd, my, I, the fun had run out of banking, so I thought I'd stay in Vietnam and do something a bit more interesting. Sam discovered that there is cacao cultivation in Vietnam, but there was no further development or processing to enhance its value. According to archaeological evidence, humans knew how to consume the cacao fruit with its strong bitter taste 4,000 years ago. Cacao originates from Mexico. It made its way to Spain with explorers and colonizers and grew in popularity across Europe by sweetening its taste with sugar. Its popularity spread globally due to its robust aroma, intense flavor, and the addition of various seasonings. As its colonial rulers, France introduced cacao trees to Vietnamese farmers for cultivation. This initiative wasn't very successful, though, because the yield and profits of other crops were more enticing. Now it's Sam, also French, who's been gradually revitalizing cacao cultivation in Vietnam. It's akin to slowly savouring and relishing the flavour of a warm cup of authentic chocolate. Sam's business partner suggested exporting cacao. The annual output from Vietnamese farmers, however, amounts to less than 0.1% of the global market demand. The concept of processing cacao seeds into chocolate emerged, yet they lacked experience in chocolate making. Chocolate is not merely about taste, it embodies a narrative, and Europe is the king of chocolate. Therefore, introducing chocolate to Vietnam has been challenging. Of course, neither of us had never made any chocolate, so, so with the first bag of beans we ever bought at the farm, we went back to my house and we put the beans in the oven and we looked up on the internet how does one make chocolate at home and so we, we roasted the beans, we peeled them by hand, put them in a blender, added some sugar and we kept the blender squeezed in until the motor of the blender was starting to smoke. <laughs> my wife was not very happy about that. Uh, and, and then we tried the result, which was this very coarse paste of cacao and sugar. And we thought, it doesn't taste like any chocolate we've ever had, but it's actually more interesting than almost any chocolate we've ever had. That small experiment in the kitchen ignited larger scale chocolate production. Feedback from chocolate production experts at a chocolate trade show in Hong Kong in 2011 underscored the distinction of Vietnamese chocolate compared to other brands in the market. Thus, their chocolate brand with the slogan From Bean to Bar was born that year. Basically, people could not believe that we'd only been, been making chocolate for two months in a, in a kitchen. They were like, 
that's impossible. We were talking to guys who've been making chocolate for generations, and they were like, "You can't come up with a product like that after two months in a, in a kitchen." And of course, you can. But I, I think back in those days, the whole you know high-quality bean-to-bar homemade chocolate concept hadn't really reached that many people yet. Besides, you know, the surprise that they get that the product came from the kitchen and you mm -hmm. made chocolate for only two months, was the other factor that the beans is from Vietnam surprised them as, as well? Yes, I, I, there wasn't much awareness of, of Vietnamese cacao, uh, but yeah, the, I, I think both factors were uh, were interesting. They, they were surprised, A, that we were making chocolate the way we made it, and B, that it came from Vietnam. Initially, Sam and his partner, Vincent Mourou, would travel to different parts in Vietnam to source high-quality cacao seeds. They began by purchasing single sacks, which were then brought back to the factory and processed into chocolate. Sack after sack was collected from various growing areas to assess the quality of the seeds from each farmer. Once they were certain which farmers could consistently grow and maintain the quality of their cacao seeds, they would purchase larger quantities. Every farmer who sells cacao seeds to Sam seeks to develop their own cacao seeds, because the price Sam pays is twice as high as the local market price. Another insight discovered from purchasing cacao seeds in this way was that cacao from each province has a unique flavour. Coming from France, a country renowned for its wine production, where wines are often classified based on the region where the grapes are grown, this sparked the idea of naturally classifying chocolate by its region of origin. From the north to the south of Vietnam, the soil, climate and methods used in cultivation contribute unique characteristics to the chocolate, including its intensity, flavour and aroma. This diversity is one of the charms of Vietnamese chocolate. One of the first farmers from whom Sam's Chocolate Company purchased cacao seeds was in Tien Giang province, located in Vietnam's Mekong Delta, nearly three hours from Ho Chi Minh City. Vo Tan Pwok, a vigorous and agile 68-year-old farmer, started growing cacao in 2006 because of a local government campaign to encourage farmers to grow the crop. Having an existing coconut farm provided a solid foundation for planting cacao as a complementary crop as cacao thrives in shade and doesn't tolerate direct sunlight well. The shade provided by the leaves and coconut trees is a crucial factor, coupled with diligent maintenance and care in enabling the cacao in this plantation to yield up to 40 tonnes per year. Despite having consumed countless amounts of chocolate in the past, this is the first time in our lives that we've had the opportunity to taste cacao seeds fresh from the pod. Wow. And can you eat it? Yeah, we, you can eat it. How do you eat it? Just... Just uh, that is. Uh. So, 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 so. Mm. It's yummy. yummy. It's crusty and sweet. Mm. That's really yummy. Obtaining quality cacao seeds isn't simply a matter of harvesting the fruit and selling it. It entails a process that involves cracking the pods to remove the pulp inside and fermenting it for five and a half days. Subsequently, the seeds are left in the sun for seven to ten days to ensure they dry completely. During this time, the seeds must be turned every 24 hours to facilitate thorough drying. Once completely dry, the seeds undergo filtration to remove foreign substances like soil, stones and wood before being packed into sacks. This meticulous process ensures that only high-quality cacao seeds, free from any additives, are sold to Sam's company. Without Sam's company, Puok would likely have ceased cacao cultivation 
long ago. He explains that selling at the market price wouldn't yield a profit, due to the extensive work and careful attention required to produce quality seeds. Fortunately, Maru purchases them at prices twice as high as the market rate. The expansion of Sam's company has significantly heightened the demand for high-quality cacao. Acquiring top-notch cacao seeds demands both physical exertion, diligent cultivation and maintenance. At 68 years old, Puok remains remarkably agile and robust. Yet the output from his farm alone falls short of meeting the demand. Therefore, he needs assistance to increase production capacity for the future. Bork's son lacks interest in carrying on with his father's cacao cultivation business. Instead, he has opted to pursue studies and employment in Ho Chi Minh City, a dream and lifestyle choice for many millennials, which is perhaps understandable. Puok then sought a young, energetic individual with an interest in cacao cultivation. Previously, he'd been fortunate to encounter a friend's son, who was enthusiastic and eager to learn about cacao growing techniques alongside him. Unfortunately, the man has since married and relocated. His focus has now shifted to offering guidance and mentorship to his friends and younger farmers who are already engaged in cacao cultivation. This approach aims to expedite the improvement of cacao quality to that sought and required by Sam's company. Puok takes us on the back of a motorbike along narrow local roads in the Vietnamese countryside, which is verdant and picturesque. Before long, we reach Viet Ninh's house. Viet Ninh, aged 58, is a member of the group led by Puok and one of the farmers who sell cacao to him for seed processing, which is then resold to Sam's company. Puok visits Viet's house once a week to inspect the cacao orchards, offering advice if anything seems amiss and exchanging knowledge on enhancing the quality of the cacao. He also addresses any questions and concerns Viet may have. He tells us that his income improved after planting cacao. What he is most proud of, however, is that the cacao seeds he cultivates are transformed into exquisite chocolate by Maru and exported around the world. Similar to Viet Ninh, he says his quality of life has improved substantially since he began cultivating cacao. And he takes immense pride in being part of Maru chocolate as a Vietnamese cacao farmer. They don't deny that growing cacao and selling it to Sam's company has greatly improved their quality of life. What fills them with the greatest pride, though, is cultivating cacao that is transformed into high-quality chocolate. Seeing the name of their home province displayed on the packaging for sale abroad gives them a sense of fulfillment that cannot be quantified. If you want to see more great content from all over the world, please like the video, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. Thank you. During the 19th century, when Vietnam was still under French colonial rule, a French physician named Alexandre Yersin recommended that farmers in the country grow cacao, but the results were not favorable. Cacao cultivation in Vietnam didn't succeed, and eventually the French government announced it would cease supporting its cultivation entirely. Although the Soviet Union took over cacao cultivation for export in Vietnam in 1980, it faced challenges and its success dwindled following the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1989. The cacao trees persisted, but their existence was purely natural. Over the past decade, a project aimed at bolstering farmers' incomes has facilitated the resurgence of cacao tree planting. Sam's chocolate is now exported to over 20 countries, with European nations, especially France, the home of Sam and his business partner being its primary customer base. So, it comes as no surprise to find customers of various nationalities frequenting this cafe in the heart of Ho Chi Minh City. 
A French couple visiting Vietnam was told by their friend that it was a must-visit spot for chocolate enthusiasts. The chocolate served at this cafe is among the highlights not to be overlooked when visiting Vietnam. We tried chocolates and now we're to Mocato Cafe. How is it? It's very good, yeah. Very good. Very good, yeah. It's a good place, great. And yeah, fabulous meal from Mocato. In addition to the high-quality dark chocolate sourced from various provinces, there's also production of chocolate infused with renowned local flavors of Vietnam, such as po flavor and chili lime. Nowadays, Vietnamese people are just as intrigued by this Vietnamese chocolate as foreigners, especially teenagers. Sam's chocolate products were launched in 2011, and the cafe has been gradually introducing them to the Vietnamese people. The establishment comprises both a cafe and a small factory, with glass panels allowing people to observe every step of the chocolate-making process. This group of Vietnamese young ladies frequently gathers at this cafe. They represent the new generation, who enjoy traveling and exploring the world just as much as they enjoy indulging in chocolate. I travel a lot, and then I just love Belgian um, chocolate, uh -huh. and I have I taste every chocolate dessert in every country I've been to, forty something already. Wow! And it's interesting to see we have a good quality chocolate here in Vietnam. Sampling chocolate in every country they visit, particularly in Europe, is a must-do for them every time. The first time they heard about chocolate made in Vietnam was thanks to the cacao seeds grown locally. Naturally, they were initially skeptical about the quality and taste. One of the initial questions that crossed their minds was how could real premium chocolate in Vietnam rival the taste of European chocolate? Upon trying it for themselves, however, Vietnamese chocolate revealed its uniqueness and distinctive identity. This cafe eventually became their regular haunt. So you guys are regular at this cafe. Uh -huh. What do you like here? Chocolate. Chocolate. And the place is made here. Right. So it's local, so it's a way of supporting our country. Uh -huh. yeah, it's good. There's never been any chocolate made here from Vietnam. And it's good to see, or interesting to see how chocolate are made from different uh, provinces mm -hmm. in Vietnam. And see how it tastes like. It's also great to see to bring your foreigner friends who are first time visiting Ho Chi Minh City to come here and enjoy the life that they do have. They wouldn't imagine Vietnam you know, and Ho Chi Minh City has this such similar cafe. Uh -huh. When I lived in Switzerland for quite long, so I know good chocolate. Mm -hmm. So I came here and I was like, damn, it smells good. Sam's success in crafting high-quality Vietnamese chocolate serves as the inspiration for many others to begin making chocolate from cacao beans grown in Vietnam. Rather than viewing them as competitors, Sam is delighted to witness this chocolate fever, as ultimately these chocolates proudly bear the label Made in Vietnam. The chocolate industry in Vietnam is not as extensive as that of coffee, whether in terms of popularity within the country or as an export product. Vietnam is, after all, the second largest coffee exporter in the world. Coffee shops in Vietnam are ubiquitous, open from morning until dark, whether it's traditional local coffee or modern cafe experiences. This starkly contrasts with the number of chocolate shops. Despite the limited presence of chocolate outlets, the taste, quality and reputation of Vietnamese premium chocolate do make it an excellent choice for chocolate lovers around the world.